Well, good morning, Lion Hearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you today? We have a big day today, and I want to get it started pretty much right now. Um, first off, I want to tell you that um, less than a week away, I will be hosting the Rava Wines event out in Paso Robles featuring the Sunset Winos, which is a super group made up of my friend Stefan Adika, who is in uh, the LA Guns and Didi Ramones band. It's also going to have members of Guns N' Roses, Alice Cooper, The Stray Cats, um, countless others. And it's going to be a great night. Now it is sold out, but I wanted to let you know that on May 18th, that will be Friday, about 5.30 Pacific Time, I'm going to try and do a live stream, and I'm going to try and live stream it for anybody that can't be there. So you have that to look forward to. Put it on your calendars, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I even went out and bought a... Dropped a lot of money on a new lens for this camera that's supposed to do a great job in low light. So I'm hoping to get that in time. It's supposed to arrive like the day before. So hopefully we'll get it in time to do this uh, this massive vlog. I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it for about a uh, probably what a month and a half now. So it's gonna be great. But today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna hop in the shower first. And we're going to head over to Beverly Hills, and I'm going to show you guys what's sometimes called the Spadina House. Sometimes it's called um, the Hansel and Gretel House. But it's more notably known as the Beverly Hills Witch's House. Um, this is considered to be the inspiration or the very first um, of the storybook homes in that whole genre of storybook houses back in the 20s. Um, that existed and so we're gonna go check it out today and we have to do it kind of early because if you remember the little kids that I'm friends with um, Levi and Deuce and their whole family I've known them since I had season tickets at the Dodgers games it's Levi's birthday today so we're going to Levi's birthday party and we have to go get him a present on the way so Days with Jordan the Lion and about a million other things begins now alright Jaws gonna come with us because uh, he can actually walk around at our destination today and we're gonna stop by the park on the way. Well, it's actually right here at this corner where the uh, the lady told me that, uh, that Jaw was an alien, which she's not exactly wrong because his middle name is Space Invader. Doesn't look like there's anybody here. It's been kind of weird weather the last two days. It starts out like very overcast and kind of sprinkly. And uh, and then, like yesterday, when I went over to Westwood, then it was kind of sunny over there, and it was kind of gloomy over here still, so. When we go over and do the vlog in Beverly Hills, we'll see what it's like there, but when we uh, head back, before we go to the birthday party, we have to swing by Gregor's and get Michael's clothes. Yeah, Gregor's the Swede that we took to uh, the Magic Castle with us, and like I mentioned, he's in a touring Swedish band, so nobody in Sweden, at least, um, he's from the island, or he lived on the island where, um, I believe, where Michael is from. And I guess nobody over there feels like ever wearing suits or anything. So when he came here, the Magic Castle has a requirement. You have to have a jacket, a tie, a uh, pair of slacks, and dress shoes. There's no give on any of that. Last time we went, Michael forgot a necktie, and they gave him one there. You're not allowed in without those. So I made sure I reminded Michael this time. And he said, um, when he came to pick me up, he goes, yeah, Gregor's actually about five minutes away from you. So on my way here, I dropped off one of my suits for him to borrow because he doesn't have anything like that. And he doesn't even, I'm not even sure he knows how to put it on because he's never owned one. So we got there, he had it on. It was all disheveled looking and, but anyway, he, uh, instead of making him change in the car <laughs> when we dropped him off, Michael is uh, going to Yosemite this weekend and asked me if I could just uh, pick up the clothes. So I'm going to pick him up on our way back from the, uh, the witch's house. I do apologize. There's no dogs here, Jaw. I don't get it. This seems like perfect weather. There's no overabundance of heat or anything. Yeah, I don't know. So somebody actually commented on my video yesterday, hey, enough of the home movies with you and your dog. Well, this is my daily vlog. I mean, just, I mean, you can tell by the title that I go somewhere interesting every day or I do something historic, but the whole point of this channel is I'm capturing my daily life and I'm making it a point to go somewhere historic. So that's the price you pay for uh, wanting to see somewhere historic or whatever I titled the video. You gotta put up with me and my dog. I'm sorry, that's it. So I texted Stefan last night and told him 
that I have written my introduction for the band in Paso Robles and told him what it was and he liked it a lot. So I think I'll probably stick with it. So it looks like we're not gonna have to go buy a present after all because I texted Levi's dad and I said, Will, what does Levi need or what does Levi want? And he said, Legos, he loves Legos. And I remember that I at one point gave Levi one of my Lego watches and the pin fell out and it broke and he's never been able to wear it. So I just went ahead and I bought him two different colors of these watches and um, had them mailed to him. So he's gonna get those in about a week and it'll be a little surprise for him. And I went ahead and ordered a new one for me because I'm gonna give this away in one of my uh, Patreon. Um, I'm gonna do a box this time. I have a Patreon reward where um, I'll send you something memorable from my apartment, like one of my own personal things that has uh, you know, some sort of sentimental value to me. But I think since I have two this month, um, I'm gonna do like a box. I'm gonna do a few items, four or five things in there, and I'll probably throw this watch in um, in one of those. Somebody left their Frisbee. Pretty cool Frisbee, too. I don't think Jaws ever understood the concept of the Frisbee. Maybe we'll try it. I'm right-handed, so this may look weird. Let's try it. Well, part of it broke. Didn't mean to do that. That's probably why they left it. Nah, he didn't care. Bring me the ball, bud. It's a detour. Well, bummer. There's no action for him again out here today. There's no puppies to play with or anything going on. We've been throwing the ball around a little bit, but we're gonna get out of here. Let's go. Uh, let's go take off to the witch's house. Well, today we're gonna check out the Spadina house. Some call it the Hansel and Gretel house of Beverly Hills. But there's a little bit more of a story to it than just that. Now this place is amazing. Some call it, you know, like I said, the Hansel and Gretel house, but it's actually this Bedina house. How it originally came about was, if you watched my vlog the other day about the Agassi Brash house, this was a popular design in the 20s. Everybody was interested in doing these storybook homes and some even say this was kind of the original of the originals. This was the first one in the area. Originally it was in Culver City at a studio. It was built for Harry Oliver who was a uh, an art director and they ended up using this as kind of an office and uh, wardrobe space and everything and then when they were gonna do something with it they were thinking of tearing it down they decided to move it here into Beverly Hills in 1934. Now the Spadinas were the family that lived in here probably the longest and apparently everybody says online that it was under them that the place really kind of started to fall apart. They started changing the insides and you can tell um, that they had put in a skyline Look at that roof and everything. I mean, that is so classic. But yeah, they they um, they started altering the inside so it was less and less storybook on the inside. Look at the outside, though. I mean, this <laughs> the walkway, the gate. I mean, just everything is absolutely incredible. You have even this this uh, pond and moat and everything here. Now under the Spadinas, they said that was gone. They said that it started to leak, and instead of fixing it, they just filled it in with soil and turned it into somewhat of a garden. And so this property is a, uh, is a historic landmark. And when they thought about tearing it down because they couldn't find a buyer, we got lucky because a, uh, a guy who was into real estate, a real estate developer, bought this property because he just thought it was too cool to, uh, to see go away or demolished. And he started slowly making all the improvements because they said, Quite literally, the inside of the house was almost falling apart. Now, if this also looks familiar, it's because you probably saw it in Clueless. Let me go get my dog. Hey, are you coming with me or are you gonna smell the berries? Because I saw specific signs that say not to eat the berries. See, I specifically saw signs said not to eat the berries. And the witch is even telling us that. Now, did you notice all these little birds? All these little black crow type birds that they've put on the property right here in the trees? It's great. And actually, um, just a little bit ago, right before I started recording, whoever lives here or whoever's staying here came walking out. They were on the phone, so. 
I don't know if it's the homeowner or not, but what an amazing property, right? People have been asking me to do this for a while and I've shown it on my Instagram, so that's why I was not too, uh, I wasn't too concerned about doing it right away. But I thought today, you know what, this would be a fun change of pace. And it's a beautiful property. I mean, they've kept it immaculate. I don't know if this is on Airbnb or not. It kind of strikes you as some place maybe that would be. This will hopefully give you a little bit better view. I like these wrought iron touches to these plants right here. But yeah, they said originally when the, the guy who owns it now, unless it's been sold, uh, when he originally bought it, he put up a black fence around the property just so he could do some renovations and people started freaking out and like signing a petition, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool that, you know, you're, I'm kind of surprised that even Beverly Hills would want something like this in the area anymore. But when I, uh, when I met with David over there at the Agassi Brash house, the Goodwill hunting house, he said that this was the very first one and that this was kind of what set the standard for people in Los Angeles wanting these storybook homes, so. Glad it's still here. Way cool. Now if you look even at the very top of the vents and everything, you can see they're kind of bent and they've got an, like a roof on them. And even one of them has a little witch hat. Can you see that? I'd love to know what the inside looks like. Especially since, like I mentioned, that the, uh, the Spadina family had started changing and getting rid of some of those whimsical touches that we were told by David is what makes these houses so popular. So I'm kind of curious as to how much has been restored and what it looks like on the inside. And they even made the, uh, the mailbox pretty cool. Just everything fits. Everything fits the vibe. It's such a cool house. Glad that people still exist that appreciate the storybook type of architecture. And if you look back in here, you can see there's a little gate that takes you around to the back of the house. So even though you can see a lot from the street, if you own this house, you get a lot of seclusion as well. Go back and watch Clueless. You'll see, uh, you'll see the girls walk past this house. And even though they're the little touches, it's things like this right off to the side that I love. I'm sure at one point if they could have, they would have made this whole sidewalk, you know, match that same mosaic style right there. All right, we're just getting Michael's suit back. All right, let's get Michael back his Clark Kent attire. <laughs> All in one piece, Michael will be happy. Well, we're on our way to the party and we're sitting in traffic. When I used to go visit them, it would only take 25, 30 minutes to get there. Now the map says an hour and five minutes. King Taco. Kind of gloomy over here today too. Don't you say hi anymore? Jordan! <laughs> What's up, buddy? There's the birthday boy. Hop and party. Looks like the jumper is about to come down. <laughs> Let me see your shirt. Dude, it's my birthday? Hey, slide down the slide for me. Round two. There's a piñata. All right, check out this ridiculous pizza. That's my hand on top of the box, so that's probably one of the, that's probably like the size of a car hood. Ooh, nice. Like an animal. Well, I guess they have Deuce helping with the uh, pinata. <laughs> Your days are numbered, my friend. Your days are numbered. They're about to hang you up. I think you can see, Will. I think you can see under there. Just grab the bat, Levi. Come on. We're waiting. Get 
Come, come on, hit it hard. One more, one more. Whoa. Whoa. Good job, Levi. Go ahead, you can do it. Hey, you got the candy in there. Oh! This is what ancient Rome must have looked like at the end of a battle. You counting up your score? Good job! Blow it out! Blow it out! Ready? I think we're about gonna call it a day here. We're cutting through downtown to go home. What a great day this was. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a night. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I wanted to thank Line Sylvester Hansen for becoming my newest Patreon. And I think this was a fun day. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And until tomorrow, have a great day and we'll see you all then. Goodbye. <laughs>